or the wonder drugs are used for a wide spectrum of conditions due to their potent anti-inflammatory effects and that too chronically. Dr. Amey Zoshi, our next faculty will guide us on care of a patient on steroids, exogenous cushions. Sir is the Secretary of Maharashtra Endocrine Society and practices endocrinology in Mumbai. The chairpersons for this session are Dr. Vineet Sabu, who has a special interest in diabetes in young, obesity, diabetic foot and nutrition and who is practicing in Amravati since 7 years. We also have Dr. Samir Sada as our chairperson who is a practicing rheumatologist in Akola. I welcome our chairpersons and request them to please occupy their seats. <coughs> Thank you, Amrita. I think we will start with session. We are running short of time. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, three organizations uh, made this update possible. That is Maha Endocrine Society, IMA Akola and API Akola. Similarly, three people work the hardest to make this possible. And I think that is Dr. Swapni, uh, Dr. Okay. and uh, Dr. Zubair. I think three cheers to all of them. They did all the hard work who is really working. And uh, thank you all of you for staying back so late evening for this uh, today's end of the update. Now, when you look at these words, close your eyes and think what comes to your mind. Sitting in an endocrine update and club two words, pain and pleasure. Don't think naughty. I wanted to take that topic. Madam said there is no demand for the topic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think here what we will be discussing about is that whenever you prescribe this particular medication called as glucocorticoids, the corticosteroids, you are giving a pleasure to a patient because they may actually be needed in the treatment of so many diseases, right from endocrinologist to rheumatologist to every damn speciality including the COVID virus, only responded to glucocorticoids. However, whenever you use steroid thok thok, konsa thok ne ka dhyan se dhyan rakho. Whenever you are using a steroid, make sure that you look at this chart, remember it. And if you are using it as an anti-inflammatory, prefer something like methylprednisolone, Prefer something that is studied for that particular disease. If you are using for intraterminal purposes, use dexamethasone. So these are broad choices. However, remember that glucocorticoids are the treatment. So if you want to please the patient, you have to also take care of the pain of the particular patient. Whenever you are using for treatment, use the shortest acting steroid that is studied and that's why methylprednisolone is preferred over dexamethasone. Use of both of them are anti-inflammatory, better than corticosteroid, but methylprednisolone is shorter acting. And the third thing to remember is that if you are using it as a replacement, which is needed in pituitary and adrenal diseases, always prefer hydrocortisone unless you have a reason not to do so. And whenever you are using a steroid, if possible, therapeutically use a topical steroid. If that is not possible, use a pulse steroid. Most of the regimens are now shifting to pulse therapy, intermittent therapy. And if you are compared to give it daily, prefer to give the largest dose in the morning. The reason for these three exercises is to prevent the suppression of hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So whenever you withdraw the steroid, the patient doesn't go in a crisis. And three points to remember in any patient who is on steroids. That is, do not stop the steroids abruptly. Patient is taking steroids for a long time, one per day, patient is back in an adrenal crisis. You think you have done a noble job, when you have steroid done here, patient is cursing you left, right and center. And if he is not in senses, the relatives are beating you left, right and center. Always remember that if a patient is steroid dependent and is sick, you have to escalate the doses. And any patient on chronic steroid therapy monitor three things. Glucose, blood pressure and electrolytes. Always remember that. 
and there is a golden savior three weeks rule. So whenever you are going to give steroids, try to give it, if you are giving it therapeutically, for not more than three weeks. The COVID guidelines said seven days. We over it, we got a lot of complications. So three weeks rule always stays. Your backup plan, if you are planning to give it for system rheumatological problem, so always better to start a disease modifying agent, try to taper the steroids, try to minimize the damage. But let's start with only one clinical case which I will be discussing throughout the talk. And that's of a 54 year old lady walking into the OPD saying that Dr. Far was a no attack. It's, it's, it pains, you know, whenever I get a I cannot even climb stairs. Char Paira guys and I just couldn't even climb the examination table. So there was a lot of proximal muscle weakness. She was gaining weight and there were stretch marks that were coming on the tummy. She said there is a little high glucose and you know sometimes I feel like there is a chakkar coming and then my DP is checked at a clinic close by and it's always recorded low. So she has been having these symptoms of body pain, stiffness, tiredness, every morning getting up in a disaster and there was a savior. And that savior was a pharmacist. So go to the particular medical shop, get a particular tablet or an injection, and So even if you try to stop it, that, that doctor is Anita Bandakara. The doctor is not the pharmacist, but the pharmacist is not the And then, now this is the other history that she had actually fractured a couple of years ago for a trivial trauma, and there is no other concomitant history in the family. The examination is quite clear. She is pushing point. Moon phase, buffalo hump, little low blood pressure. Pushing says hypertension if it is pituitary origin, if it is exogenous, you will have hypotension because of episodes of steroid withdrawal and severe proximal muscle weakness just finding it difficult to typically walk and then I told her Madam, I want to see your wonderful tablet because even I am not aware of something so magical and then she came up with this that's dexamethasone, she was taking it left, right and center whenever needed and now we have a double bouncer why does she need dexamethasone? what to do with her now? So we did further investigations. You can see that she was mildly anemic. The high total leukocyte count with the steroid effect. But what strikes you is the typical post-prandial rising sugar against steroid induced hyperglycemia. And you can see that her cortisol and ACTH levels are low. So finally, we decided to do some more tests because she was having a lot of pain. And the RA factor and anti-CCP came strongly positive. So I think uh, always body pain needs a rheumatologist opinion, please. So then she was sent to her rheumatologist. However, her diagnosis is now totally changed. She was indeed having rheumatoid arthritis. Her aches and pains were genuine. The disease needed treatment, but we also needed to incorporate a plan or a vision to remove the pain part of the treatment. So she definitely needs both. So what when she was referred to a rheumatologist, he said that okay, we are willing to put her on a disease modifying medication. We can taper her steroids gradually, not abruptly. Or this one is low. She needs a care of three main things: bone, eye, and metabolism. And Finally, she needs a care during steroid administration and steroid withdrawal to prevent a crisis. So, the rheumatologist said that, okay, let her be on methotrexate and hydroxychloroquine. Prednisolone I need only for 3-4 weeks. After that, we can sit together and decide what is to be done. However, now the main issue comes. What to do for her bones, metabolism and eyes? So let us start with the bones because bone pains, muscle weakness, main main symptoms. So before we move on to addressing these things, always note patient's height, patient's weight. In a child and an adult, it's important to note height because 
the commonest reason why steroids cause plaque is vertebral fracture. A short height is always ringing for a disaster. And any child never ever stop monitoring growth if the child is on steroids. You have to monitor the BP, the glucose, the bone density. So these are the broad things that you should be taking a stop on. Ideally, any patient who is being started on glucocorticoids after 40 years of age needs to undergo a test called as DMD by DEXA. Do it at your convenience if it is not immediately available, but keep it in your mind. Inform the patient that I need this particular test because I need to help you out for protecting the bones. Get an X-ray of the lateral spine if you cannot get an X-ray immediately. If there is a fracture, the treatment is different than what we are going to discuss now. So that's important to at least get an X-ray of the spine laterally. You should also assess for metabolism, the glucose level, the dyslipidemia, and uh, the fracture risk of the particular patient, which we assess by FRAC score. I, I would request that next time, whenever you have an endocrine update, tell madam. One is hypogonadism, testosterone replacement she has to take, and second is osteoporosis. So, this is something called as glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis. The commonest reason why other than postmenopausal osteoporosis, the bones become weak is because of this single medication that is abused left, right and center, that's glucocorticoids. And how small a dose can occur? Even 2.5 milligrams of prednisolone used for more than 6 weeks is going to cause bone weakness or bone loss for minimum next 4 to 6 months. And if you look at the fracture risk also, the mere increase in the dose from 2.5 to 7.5 almost doubles the fracture risk of an individual and most of the fractures are crippling spine and hip fractures which are as bad a prognosis as a heart attack. So what will you be doing? For every patient on steroids, the patient has to receive calcium and vitamin D. Any patient taking steroids for more than 3 weeks, calcium and vitamin D has to be a part of the regime. And it's mandatory that you prefer or offer the patient the option of getting a DEXA, at least get an X-ray of the lateral spine and assess the fracture risk of the patient because even if you are going to give him the weakest medication as a profile axis, if he has a fracture, you may have to give him a stronger medication like teriparatide injections to heal that fracture. Secondly, calcium and vitamin D for all, but anybody above 40 years of age needs more than calcium and vitamin D. So if somebody on steroids come to you, doctor, what could I do? Okay, for your bone weakness, take calcium and vitamin D. Don't stop there. If you are giving the steroid more than 3 to 6 weeks, a minimalistic approach says that you should give him a medication called as bisphosphonates. How long? At least three months after stopping the steroids. What if there is a vertebral fracture? Change gears, shift from bisphosphonates to teriparatide or something called as denosumab. How long to give? Probably three to six months after stopping the steroids you have to give. And bisphosphonates are economical, easy, weekly tablet or a monthly <coughs> injection or sorry annual injection is, is good enough. So, Always look at the patient, keep his bones in mind, look at how old is the patient, our lady is postmenopausal, so if she has severe osteoporosis, we will consider higher treatment. But remember, calcium for all, anti-resorptives for people above 40 or below 40, on a case-to-case -case basis, we let the endocrinologist take the call. So we did what we discussed for the patient, told the patient you need to get a BMD, you need to get a BMD every two years because rheumatoid arthritis is a risk factor again for osteoporosis and remember to continue calcium and vitamin D for ever because she is postmenopausal now and start with alendronate, the basic bisphosphonate, she did not have a vertebral fraction, basic bisphosphonate 70 mg once a week, take an empty stomach, full glass water, not to eat, drink or lie down. So whenever you give bisphosphonate, not to lie down for one hour after taking the tablet. Always, always steroids will cause weight gain. And most of the times the patients will end up with mechanical issues. 
difficult to walk, muscles are weak, bones are also weak. Sensitize the patient that they need to follow a diet. Patient on steroids has to be protein replete. You know what happened in COVID? Glucose levels started rising. We were puzzled what to do. Because the patients were on steroids, we started giving them protein rich or at times very, very carb deficient diet. And not only did it help them cope up better, it also helped us manage their glucose levels better. So it's better to give them a ensure at least 1 gram per kg if not more of proteins or patients on steroids and tell them to exercise regularly, maintain the muscle strength as much as possible. Now moving on from metabolism to glucose, an important part of metabolism. Any patient coming to you, you are planning to start steroids, at least do an HGP, tell the patient to get a fasting and post meal. Important because teen hafte bar sugar karke aega, doctor apne diabetes diya. So then you have to have a particular communication, okay, your sugar is like here, currently like this, he may actually be diabetic. And if not, tell him that 48 hours later, again do your glucose level, let me know. Stable patients on OPD basis, most of the times can be managed by metformin and DPP4 inhibitors. Overall from COVID, DPP4 inhibitors have got more preference in management of steroid induced hyperglycemia. But most of the patients will actually need insulin, especially if they are unwell. So if somebody is hospitalized, it's always better to give insulin. Look at these three figures very, very carefully. If the patient is on hydrocortisone, short-acting steroid, short-acting insulin. If the patient is on prednisolone or methylprednisolone, something like insulatat or mixtat, intermediate-acting insulin. Somebody who is on dexamethasone, more than 24 hours action, needs a long-acting insulin like glargin, and then you can give bolus doses based on the three meal sugars. This is one algorithm. As I said, I myself will share the PPT with madam. I try to see how many of our speakers agree to it, and we try to see that uh, I mean whatever uh, deliberations have been there, at least a part of them stays with you as a memory. So the management at a glance. In an OPD patient, you can use OADs, DPP4 inhibitors, alpha glucosidase inhibitors, once a day insulin. IPD patients, best is to put them on a basal bolus insulin because IPD patients, we have to give a best result. As well as tight glucose control is needed. Third part, we learned about bones, we learned about metabolism, third is eye. Three things to look in the eye, cataract. Cataracts are much more common in steroid users, glaucoma. Raised intraocular pressure much more common and retinal changes. So three things that ophthalmologist must check. Ophthalmologist ke paas bheja to Mumbai mein bhi log keval number check kar ke aate hai. I mean they don't go to an ophthalmologist. So always mention these three things. If they are there, I will accept. If they are not there, I will ask you to go again and get all these things in writing. Then only we move ahead. So coming back to our case, she was started on calcium, she was started on vitamin D, alendronate, her glucose level because she was OPD patient, mildly diabetic, cetaglyphin metformin was given and she had actually had a cataract for which she was made fit for cataract surgery. Now, what care to be taken, the third and the last aspect of the talk, because she is not going to undergo cataract surgery, any surgical procedure, tell the patient he has or she has to take a bolus of IV steroid push. 100 mg hydrocortisone before, before a cataract surgery or a dental extraction takes care of a small stress. For a bigger surgeon, 15 mg 6 hourly or something like that hydrocortisone can be given. Now what if the patient is at her home, she is uh, now on a maintenance small dose of steroid, she suddenly calls up doctor, I am having some cold and fever, what is to be done? Tell her, to double the dose or triple the dose of steroids. Agar achcha nahi lag raha hai, to din baad isko teen guna tak kar do. If you are taking one tablet, try to take three tablets a day. So that is what we tell the patient on a OPD basis here. Obviously, anybody coming in crisis, you have to manage and tell all the patients. If the patient is non-diabetic also, but now has become sick, check your glucose, check your electrolytes, monitor your BP anytime, anywhere. Don't sit at home. Come to the emergency. You will get hospitalized and treated because they worsen and going crisis very fast. Now, any patient who is on steroids, 
especially children who are taking replacement doses, any adults who are with Addison's disease or long-term steroid like our patient needs to have a steroid card. Imagine such a patient going for some food, वो गोली को भूल गए, दो तीन दिन हो गए, चौथे दिन he has collapsed, he has to be rushed to the hospital. So the hospital treating doctor finds this, immediately gives hydrocortisone, patient is on her feet, that's wonderful. So always carry steroid car for patients who are steroid dependent. Now we have done a wonderful job. Gave a patient the care plan, managed all the complications. Now the patient says, Doctor, Atta Kup Changla hai, Atta hi Kuli Bandha Kara. So, what to do? You have to do a serum cortisol level. Give prednisone in the morning, then next morning when you check the blood sample, do it without taking prednisone. So, 24 hours, no medication to avoid assay interference, check the cortisol level. If somebody is on dexamethasone, shift to prednisone. Then do a cortisol level, 24 hours gap. If the cortisol level is beyond 18, stop the steroid. If the level is between 9 to 18, so usually if the level is above 9, you can safely assume that patient can still cope up. Normal level of cortisol is between 5 to 20. If it is above 9, you are again good enough to stop the steroid. But if the level is between 3 to 9, if it is below 3, no stunts, please continue our maintenance dose. Between 3 to 9, do something called a synactin stimulation test. There is an injection called a synactin. Give that injection, one hour post that injection, check a cortisol level. It has gone above 80. Fantastic, patient can stop. I am repeating, below 3, not to stop steroids. 3 to 9, inject synactin, do one hour post synactin cortisol, above 18, stop. In above 9, Reasonably sure because synactin amyloid is again an issue. So in our patient, we tapered the dose, kept the minimum dose. Then we saw that the level is little improved. Then we gave her an alternate day dose in a guarded manner. Told her that sickness we have to increase. Few days later, her cortisol level came better. We stopped prednisone. She is now very happy with the treatment that's given to her with methotrexate and uh, hydroxychloroquine. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is also quite stable. So let's have a quick, quick recap. So glucocorticoids may actually be needed to treat a disease. If you have a disease within the treatment, want to give the patient pleasure, always be prepared to take care of the pain part of it. Try to use the shortened dose whenever possible and if you are giving as a replacement, like in Addison's disease, prefer hydrocortisone. Whenever giving for therapeutic use, topical steroids. Alternate therapy and if you are giving daily, biggest dose to be given in the morning. Never stop glucocorticoids abruptly. Always remember crisis management and always check care of glucose, blood pressure, and electrolytes. Most importantly, if the steroid needs to be continued, check for bones, metabolism, and glucose. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you one and all for your patient listening. Thank you, thank you once again. Very informative and uh, elaborative talk, sir. Uh, this issue of steroid induced hypercortisolism is uh, very prevalent in our OPDs. We face many patients who are uh, dealing with this thing, weight gain, uh, uh, more or skin rashes, uh, dryness of skin, uh, mood swings. So, you have covered all the points very well. Uh, any questions from audience? I have one quick comment to mention. There are many patients who are taking alternative medicines for uh, weight. Uh, for rheumatoid disorders, Dr. Sabin was uh, agreeing. Uh, those are actually dexona tablets or any steroid tablets mixed in some uh, powder and they are taking that. That is actually dexona. You will, if you do basal cortisol, you will get to do that cortisol actually suppressed. And you need to refer those patients, patients to endocrinologists or start uh, tablet doses of steroids. Otherwise, patient will end up in adrenal crisis. That's it. Dr. Satish Srivani, please come forward and visit.